Hello everyone. Thank you for joining my broadcast here. Today I'm going to talk about the love of God and the three and the three relationships we have. Basically, we have to understand how much that God loves us because it says in the Bible, we love God because he first loved us. And also it says in the Bible where Jesus was talking about the two people being forgiven, one man was forgiven much and the other man was forgiven little. And then the outcome was, who loved the more? The one who was forgiven more. That's the one who loves more. And that's the love of God right there, is that he's forgiven us. And God demonstrated his own love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, the enemy of God cut off from God, no hope, we we're destined for eternal hell, separated from God for eternity. God so loved us that he gave his son to die on the cross for our sin, to reconcile, to bring us back to himself, to God. And that's the whole plan of salvation. And the thing is, you got to understand, before Jesus Christ was born of flesh, he was the word of God. He, he, he is God, and he was one with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. And then he was made a man born of the Virgin Mary, and then he offered himself up once and for all to die for the sins of the whole world. So Jesus is the only way to God our Father, and that was the whole plan of salvation for us, that Jesus died on a cross, and all we had to do was receive the opportunity that, that God gave, gave us to receive his Son. So we accept him as our Savior. Soon as we accept Jesus as our Savior, we shifted from the old man, and behold, all things became new. We became a new creation in Christ, and all the old things of the old man has passed away. So we are made perfectly holy, righteous, and pure because of the blood of Jesus, because of what God did. It had nothing to do with our human efforts. It was solely based on what God did for us, and therefore our spirit became alive. And not only that, because of that, we who are cast away, now we've been brought into the family of God. So now we are his son, we are his bride, that means one, one with God, and we're also part of his body because we're the body of Christ. So we are a part of God, he's in us, and we're in him. And he, he's given us all power and authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us because the enemy has been stripped of all power and authority. That is the truth, so make sure you understand that too. Because when you engage in demonic activity, you have to know who you are in Christ, and not being doubtful, but knowing that you're one with God the Father, and you have all power and authority over every power of the enemy. You have total victory, total power over it. So that's a settled issue forever in the courts of heaven. So, getting back to the love of God, now, what we have to understand is three relationships. I'm going to talk about the first one, which is God our Father. We have a relationship with God our Father now because of what Jesus did. But, how do we grow in His love? Is remember what I said, He's been forgiven much, loves much, and without faith it's impossible to please God. So we have to believe the Word of God. So the more we believe how much he loves us and how we know he loves us, because he loved us first. He did all that work to bring us to himself. So what we have to do is meditate and get a revelation, a deep revelation of how much God agapes us. That's a Greek word for unconditional love. Unconditional love is the kind of love that does not seek its own. It's always looking out for the benefit of others. There's like... Uh, eros, which is sexual love, there's phileo, which is brotherly love, and then there's uh, stork, which is family love, and then there's agape, which is the God kind, unconditional, no strings attached love. So we have to do is understand and meditate on how much God loves us, because as much as we know how much God loves us, then we can love God with that much more. So it's by faith that we love God. It's by faith that we know how much God loves us. So he starts it. He starts on his end. And we have to understand 
get a, get a picture of how our Heavenly Father is. We cannot rate Him against any person on the earth because man, in a sense, has not been made per perfected. Even your natural father. Some of you had good fathers. Some of you have abandoned fathers. Some of you have fathers who just abuse and mistreat you. But your Heavenly Father is a whole, whole other dimension. So what you have to do is start thinking about Him, painting a picture, and seeing how good He is towards you. He is so insanely in love with you that He gave His Son to die for you. And He gave His Holy Spirit to live inside of you because once you've been accepted Christ and been redeemed by His blood, now you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. He lives inside of you. That's how much He's one with you, that His Holy Spirit li lives inside of you. And he calls you your friend because he'll lead and guide you into all truth, all knowledge and stuff. So that's how much we have in our salvation. So we have to give thanks, not out of our works, but understanding, a revelation of how much he's done for us, how much he loves us. So that's the first relationship, us and our Father in heaven. Once we meditate and understand that, the deeper we understand how much he loves us, then the second relationship is with ourselves. Is we when we look at ourselves, our self-image is not a part of us, our old nature. We had a self-image before we got saved. And whatever upbringing you got, whatever learning you had from your parents, friends, relatives, or acquaintances, whatever they spoke into your life, they painted your self-image. They painted who you are in yourself. And then that's the reason why some people are broken because they went through bad experiences and they've been told, oh, you're no good, you'll never amount to nothing. And then they start believing that. Well, the thing is, that's the self-image of the old man. But once you come into Christ, all the old things have passed away. That It's gone, it's over with. Now you are one with Christ. So now you have a new self. And that self is the same self-image that Christ is. So as Christ is, so are we in this world. So now we can love ourselves, not because of self-love, but because of God loves us. So our identity is in Christ because of the love of God. That's how it functions. And then when you function in that identity, you'll have no more guilt, no more shame, no more condemnation. You'll be free of all that. You'll be free of fear because faith works by love. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we have to believe this. We have to believe the truth. This is the truth. And the Bible says, you shall know the truth. And that truth that you understand and perceive shall make you free. So the deeper we understand this, the more freer we get, the more thankful we get. We can thank people for all of our, everything we have. Relationships, possession, our health, everything. Because... We understand how much he loves us and thankfulness is the attitude we have and the opposite of that is a victim mentality and if you not if you latch on to somebody's done me wrong they offended me they der they derive my name they should have done this for me i've done all this for them and they could not help me out one little bit that's an offense because the offense has come because one has not been made perfect in the unconditional love of god so you see how that kind of wraps into our whole self, our identity, our total being? Is, to, is when we understand the love of God, it's very easy to forgive someone. Very easy. Because we know I'm deserving death and hell. And once we're forgiven that, then we can forgive our people for doing us wrong. And the third relationship is with everybody else. As much as we love ourselves is how much we're going to love everybody else. So as much as we understand how much God forgives us of all we've done wrong, is how much we're going to forgive others of how they've done us wrong. And that's the perfect love of God. And the thing is, we're already holy, righteous, and pure. That state will always be the same. So we do not have to look down at ourselves when we fall or sin or do whatever that's against the commandments and the ordinances of God. Because that's not our true self. Our true self is holy, righteous, and pure. Thing is, we've learned a bad habit. You've gone through your whole life being programmed with the world, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And this is the world system, but we've been programmed because the 
the mind of Adam. And that's what comes in. So now, God did everything he did possibly to make us whole and righteous. Now it's up to us to renew our mind by the word of God. And not only by the word of God, but we have to believe by faith and receive it that it's reality. We have to believe it in order for it to start to manifest. Like a healing, like a deliverance, like your salvation. You have to believe it. And believe it not on your mind. That's where it starts first. And then you have to start meditating on it. And it'll start getting down to being the root part of you to know his love. And once you have that, you're walking in, in the perfection of God the Father. Jesus says, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. That perfection is how much can you love unconditionally. As much as you love unconditionally is the closer you are to the perfection of God. Because the Bible says God is love. That is the only lens that we view the whole Bible in. There's all kinds of doctrines, all kinds of teachings, everything and everything. But it has to come through the one filter, the one lens of an unconditional love. When you have that as your core root foundation, then you can build everything else. You can build the knowledge, you can build the power, you can build the, the, uh, the giving. You can build everything else on top of that. But you have to get the foundation right. Because if you don't, when trials come and situations come, then you'll be tossed into a fro. Well, does God love me anymore? Because you look at your circumstances, you're walking by sight, by the five senses, rather than walking by the truth, which God loves you, period. So no matter what happens to you, know this, that God loves you insanely much. That's why he died for you. He saw the value in you. He, you wouldn't go buy something like a car unless you, you, the amount of money you pay for a car because you, that car to you has value, so therefore you'll spend the money. Or a wife or children, you see a value in them, then you're going to put out the extra effort. You're going to spend more time or whatever because you see the value. Well, God sees an infinite value in us. I, and I do say infinite value because the reason why I say that, because if God paid that price and gave himself up to just buy us back, and to bring us into himself. You know what kind of value that is? You know what kind of value that is? Knowing that God did all that just so he can have us for himself. He values us so much. He values us more than all this creation. He values us above all things. That's how much he appreciates and loves us. That is the hardcore love of God. You get that into your spirit. You get that into your total mindset. And you'll never be shaken because God has an infinite value on in us. So we're worth more than everything. That's the reason why I paid the price. And he didn't offer this up to the angels, fallen angels, or anything. Just to man, because he specifically made us in his image. His image, he wanted to have fellowship. He had himself, the three in one, but he wanted more. He wanted us to be fellowshipping with him for eternity. In fact, he, he wanted to fellowship us so much, he even became a man to be on the same level as we are, the man side of Jesus. So you know that God is crazy about us. And that's what you got to think every day. No matter who tells you what, Uncle Joe tells you you're no good, Aunt Sally says uh, you're, you're worthless, they're all lies. You have to reject that because man is fallen. They're looking for love in all the wrong places. But know this, that you're extremely well loved. It's a simple, it's a simple word. It really is. And to back that up with scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, you can have everything, but if you don't have the unconditional love of God, it means nothing. And then you have the two greatest commandments, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as much as you love yourself. He says, all Ten Commandments, all the 613 laws of Moses, and all the prophets have been fulfilled with these two simple commandments. So when you break it down, it's that easy. It really is. And the love of God is an easy thing to understand. It's not hard. You can change easily. Just renew your mind by the Word of God. And finally, I will have to say, when you love yourself, you love everybody else as much as you love yourself. So that's a third relationship. So again, the review, three of them. 
one with you and your father, one with you and yourself, and one with you with everybody else. The first one with, with our father, you have to know that by faith. Faith works by love, and believing is the act of faith. And then the fruit of those, that faith, you know, show me your faith, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Well, the faith is believing, and the works it will be evident in your total change of your character. That is the works of God. It is also the work of God to believe in Him whom He sent. And then that outwork works, not only loving yourself and having the joy of the Lord, then they can actually see you loving people when they give you the shaft, stiff you, or do you wrong, and you retaliate with them, not with hate, but with love. Jesus says, love your enemy. Bless those who persecute you. So Jesus is laying down some of the facts about what love is. And you can know a tree by its fruit. So when you see somebody getting shafted and they bless instead of curse, that's fruit. That's a fruit of a tree that you know that's a, that's a righteous tree, the tree of love. Because we get saved, the people, we just get saved. So that's, that's the whole truth behind everything, is the whole thing is function on the agape, the unconditional love of God. And make that the main point of your whole Christianity. Because Christianity never works. Has nothing to do with works. Has nothing to do with you. Has nothing to do with everybody else. It solely has to do with God's love. And he already demonstrated that. He proved that. And he made everything perfect. Because remember, he loves you so much. you got infinite value. So thank you for tuning in. And uh, let me pray with you. Thank you, Father God. I pray that everybody out there who hears my voice or sees this video will capture the understanding of the deep height, depth, and breadth of your love, Lord, that goes all beyond understanding. So thank you for joining, and God bless you.